Mr. Bunnell here, Hearts Academy. We're going to talk about focus stacking. Focus stacking using a program called Combined ZP. Uh, focus stacking is where you get an artificially large depth of field through computational photography um, to get a really cool uh, effect in the, in the camera. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a, a stack of photos of the same scene with the same shutter speed, same aperture, uh, focused at different distances. And we're going to put them all to together with a free program called Combine ZP. Um, in the classroom, you'll have to use a Windows computer. This uh, program is not on Mac or Linux. So uh, let's get started. You're going to go to the Windows button and click it and type Combine and hit Enter. This opens the program. Now, weirdly, I have two monitors, so the program starts the toolbar on <clears throat> the other screen. This is the toolbar. This program was developed for microscopy. Uh, one of the effects of optics is as you get closer to the subject, the area of sharp focus, the depth of field gets smaller, even in the same aperture. Um, so if you recall, small aperture gives you a large area of sharp focus. A large aperture gives you a small area of sharp focus. N either one gets smaller as you get closer to the subject. So this was developed, uh, this, this program was developed for microscopy. So when somebody's taking a picture using a microscope of a fly's eye, because you're focused super, super close, um, the area, the depth of field is very tiny. So what they do is they focus on the top of the fly's eye and then they move the focus down through the eye maybe 25 times to get a stack of 25 photos. And then they get the whole eye in focus. They have a program, this is combined ZP, which takes the in focus parts of all the images and puts them together like this. So this is the toolbar. What we're going to do is you're going to click new. When you take your photos, they should be numbered. You should number them one through whatever, five or 10, however many photos you have in your stack and put them in a folder where you know you can go find them. So I'm going to click on new, which brings up the, the open, the file manager here. And I'm going to click the first one. And remember, if you click once, it's going to select one. Don't open one at a time. I'll go here and then go back and go back and forth. So click on the first one, <clears throat> hold the shift key and click on the last one and then open the entire stack at once. And then it opens up and here we are. So in this image, so this is actually the first image in the stack. And up here we have like a go up through the stack and go down through the stack tool. So I'm going to click go down through the stack here. I don't know if it's behind my face. Um, the, the image is focused right on the very closest edge of the desk. Next, I'm going to click this one, and now it's focused here on the desk. And you can kind of use this, see this hinge. It's way out of focus at the back and in focus at the front. And we're now starting to lose a little focus on the very front of the camera, fr front of the image. Now I'll go to the next one. I think I focused on the chair or maybe the far side of the desk, maybe right about here. And this far front part of the desk is starting to get out of focus and the background is still out of focus. And we go to the next one in the stack. And I think I focused on these computers back here, but the, the fire extinguisher is not very sharp. And I go to the final picture and the focus of the fire extinguisher is perfectly sharp, but now the front edge of the desk out of focus. Um, so that's the entire focus stack. The next, now you've got the, you now that confirms that you've got your focus stack loaded. And then we go through here, we go, go to uh, this pull down menu. And there's a bunch of different optical programs that will find different ways to find all the in focus parts of the picture. The best method that seems to work with this program is to use all methods. Once you click on that, just click on the big go button. Um, now I've got to go over here. It put the progress monitor. Here's the progress monitor. It's just going through all those methods and it's showing you as it works. The faster your computer, the faster this will work. The slower the computer, it's might take some time to run through everything. This lower will work. Um, even though my, my computer is pretty fast, I'm thinking it uses the CPU and not the video card. Um, that's neither here nor there. So just a few notes as we're waiting for this to get done. When you're shooting your focus stack, make sure you're on a tripod and you very carefully do the focus without moving the camera. So you want the camera very stable on a tripod. Uh, you want a scene where there's something close to the lens and something far away from the lens. My scene, that, that sample scene, kind of ended at the, at the door there, which is only like 10 feet away. You can have a scene that you can see all the way, you know, a, a large distance. So you could have something extremely close to the camera and something hundreds of feet away. You'd need more images than my stack. 
So you just need enough images for a focus at every distance um, so that there's no out of focus bit of the scene. Now here's the stack is done. Um, and you can see from the very front edge of the image all the way to the back to the fire extinguisher, everything's in focus and there is no aperture no matter how small that will make all this in focus. And even if you did use a small aperture, the smaller the aperture, you lose a little bit of resolution when you're using the smallest aperture. Um, it's just a function of the optics. You're only using the very center of the lens. You're not using the entire lens to take advantage of the, the optics there. Um, okay, now that you've got your focus stack all done, just come up here. Oh, actually there's one more step. You can see there's a little bit of weirdness in the image right up here at the top. There's sort of like a mirror effect going on and sort of mirror effect in the corner here. And uh, down here at the bottom, there's a little bit of funkiness and some around the sides here, right? There's a funkiness right there in the image. And they have a little button, this button right here. If I click on this button, it puts a little dotted line around the image and that, and it's basically going to only save the part inside the crop. That cro it crops out the weirdness on the outside. That's a byproduct of the, the functions here. Then I click save. And I'm going to give it a name that makes sense and tells me the assignment. So it's well, focus stack. This I can't spell. Okay, I'll make it focus stack three or two because I've made a couple already because I had to redo the the video. Anyway, made a few mistakes. All right, and hit enter, and it's saved into. Oh, and I want to set a hundred quality. It's already set. If it's not hundred, make it a hundred. And I click OK. And it saved the image. Um, then it's all done. I just closed down the program and I don't want to save anything. So there it is. That's uh, focus stacking with combined ZP. Um, just to reiterate again, shoot on a tripod. Be very gentle when you're adjusting focus so the camera doesn't move. Be very gentle when you take the picture so the camera doesn't move. Get your focus stack of however many images you need. Um, you kind of have to, you might have to practice a little bit to get the, the focus or, or try a couple different uh, runs through it to get the, 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 fa the stack that has all the focus distances you need. It's going to be like focusing one foot, two foot, four foot, eight foot, and so, so forth. Um, and then download all the pictures, number them, convert them, and um, put them into a folder and then use combined ZP. When you turn in the assignment, you need to turn in all the raw files, all the JPEGs, and the final combined uh, JPEG. And that's it. Thank you very much.